Okay, so it is my honor to introduce Cher Thomas, who will be moderating our next patient panel called Creativity Cures the Soul. Um, other than being one of my amazing coworkers, Cher is a registered dental hygienist and a renal transplant recipient. Uh, after her kidneys failed due to ANCA positive vasculitis in 1999, her brother became her kidney donor. Cher utilizes her experience with peritoneal dialysis and organ transplantation to explore the relationship between oral and renal health. Um, as someone who loves getting creative when I can, I'm super excited for this panel to see some of the amazing things uh, that Cher's panelists have created. So Cher, I'll go ahead and pass it on to you. Thank you, Isela, and welcome everybody to Creativity Cures the Soul. I've been looking forward to this ever since Lori invited me to do it. RSN offers a um, Get Creative class. It's the third Thursday of every month. We invite you to join us. Actually, um, if you're looking at a calendar, you know this past Thursday was the Get Creative time zone, but we're actually rescheduled it for next week. So if you would like to come and join us, I'll ask somebody to put the link for registration in the chat. We'd have love to have you come. Uh, art is everywhere, whether you're looking for it or not. It's in the design of a soda can. It's in a design on a cereal box. It's on the graphics that you can't get a grandkid to quit playing on a video game. It is in the quilt that your grandmother gave you and you cherish that quilt. It's in your garden. It's in your flower garden. It's in the music that you stream and the videos that you stream. It is everywhere. And all we have to do is open our eyes and look for it. And guess what? Creativity is great for people living with a chronic illness. It can help us alleviate stress and anxiety. And as we do that, the better we're going to feel, right? Uh, it's also in a child's art project. And what you're going to see today with my five panelists is you're going to see that it shows up in a lot of places. And my five panelists are Marge, Julie, Abigail, David, and Rhea. Each panelist brings a little something different. Some of them repeat each other, but they all bring something different. And some of them I kind of had to say, yes, you do belong on this panel. But <laughs> that's because sometimes people don't know they're as good as what they are. So mm -hmm. what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to interview each panelist one at a time. I'm going to let you get to know them a little bit because... You know, who you are is a part of who your art is. Uh, your experience with kidney disease can be a part of that, too. And, Rhea, I'm glad that you have your furry kid here to join us, too, because at RSN, we love our animals as well. So we're going to start out with Marge, Marge McDicken. And, Marge, could you share with the group here what stage of kidney disease that you're in currently? I'm in 3B. Okay, and are you on medication to control your illness? How long have you known that you had kidney disease? I had a uh, knee replacement back in 2020, and uh, that was that crazy COVID year. And uh, the, so, yeah, it was sort of a crazy year, and um, I was quite surprised. And uh, I'm not on any medication. However, this was a blessing because I was able to get plugged in with nutrition, with nephrology. I had the experience of, of figuring out the getting kidney scan, going to all these different, uh, uh, having multiple uh, tests, uh, figuring out where to go for all these tests and uh, getting plugged in with all the different providers that I needed. I also needed to plug in with cardiology. So it was very helpful to get this whole panel of people together. And uh, I have, uh, we've uh, talked about all these other uh, medical problems I've had and uh, with discussions, probably the type of medications I've been on have not been helpful for my kidneys. 
uh, the type of pain medications, all the ibuprofen type medications probably have caused some damage to my kidneys over the years. So um, okay. this is good. But now I'm on the kind of on a better path. And uh, fantastic. Uh, very yeah. good. Very good. Why don't we start looking at your art? And I'll ask you some questions as we go. Suzette, could you put up Marge's slide deck, please? Oh, yeah. So, so if you could tell us about this and then tell me, have you always been interested in art? Yes, uh, I have. I grew up in Iowa, and so I was surrounded by people that were very creative. And uh, this is a chemo hat. I go to a special group that uh, we bring our sewing machines, and we're all sewing up these hats. And then um, at the end of the year, uh, they're taken to a hospital and um, uh, they're dispersed to people that uh, need these hats. And oh, I bet they, I bet they appreciate it. I know a lot of people who have done chemo. Yeah. Uh, Suzette, can you advance to the next slide? Oh, wow. Yes. So this is our Get Creative project. And this is warm hands, hopeful hearts. And I just love making these fingerless gloves. And uh, this is um, on the one side, uh, the right side, uh, I did a little bit of crochet here. And on the left side, I did a little bit of knitting. And uh, I would encourage anybody that's interested in uh, participating in this project. We've got a wonderful uh, website out on the RSN. And you don't even have to be a knitter or crocheter. We've got uh, things where you can create these out of socks. Mm -hmm. And um, it just it really touches my heart uh, to make these. And I've got another bag I'm working on to pack up and get out. Uh, when I took these over to the mailing center, um, the gentleman that helped me pack these up said, um, he asked me, what, what are these? And I said what they were. And he said, oh, his grandfather had dialysis. And so he knew right away that this was a very needed item. What a great conversation starter, right? Yeah. Uh, Suzette, next slide, please. Oh, okay. So here are my hats. So I use this round loom. To make the hats. Uh, some of them have pom-poms, some of them don't. Uh, some of them I use for charity items. Um, uh, some of them are just simply to give out uh, at Christmas to family members. And some of them, maybe somebody just needs a warm hat. And uh, lots of fun making them on the loom. Go are these through. expensive to make? Uh, a lot of people, they know that I make these and they just give me the yarn. Uh, yesterday, oh, wow. I went to a group and they had a whole bag of free yarn. And so certainly I took advantage of that. Mm. So, okay. That Very good. Cool. So, oh, this is fun. Uh, on the Very. Side, uh, this is that sewing group. Uh, we make little booties. And uh, it's surprising. I had no idea people show up and have babies and maybe don't even have baby clothes for the newborn baby. Mm -hmm. Or maybe it's a baby that's maybe going into the, the for adoption and maybe they don't have clothes. So uh, we make uh, the baby booties and uh, other groups make uh, things and then they put together layouts all together. So at the end of the year, uh, again, they're uh, given to the hospital and the hospital forms these little layouts with all the items. On the right hand side, that's actually a dishcloth that I kind of put together and made it into a crazy bunny head. And I like to make creative little items. And I gave this out at Easter to uh, friends and family just for fun. That is so good. I have a great niece that would absolutely love that. I know that you made it as a, a dish, you know, washing item, but I know a niece, minus the little googly eyes, that would just love to play with that. Next slide, please. Oh, on the 
uh, left hand side. I also kind of try to do some bags. Um, I made a sent off for a custom piece where uh, my daughter's dog was printed on some fabric and then I did kind of a quilted uh, item and I made a bag for her and she's been using that to carry groceries in out here in the Pacific Northwest. You have to pay for a bag so she takes all of her grocery bags and uh, she's been using that and then on the That's really cool oh, yeah. it's fun on the right hand side um, I've really enjoyed the beads that we do at Get Creative, and these are little seed beads on some memory wire, and uh, we had a topic uh, to do, um, for, I think the topic was birds of a feather, and Yes, that was uh, my birds of a feather, I made a little bird uh, wire bracelet, and that was a lot of fun <laughs> for me, and uh, it meant a lot for me to do those uh I can just imagine the birds flying free. It was a fun project. Uh, yeah. Next slide, please. Oh, and I also do some uh, um, things outside in my group. Um, so I was a hostess for the special class at uh, So Expo. I know they have these expos around the country. Sometimes they're called quilt expos, craft expos. So I was hosting this group. They um, made this silk fabric and uh, stretched it across this stretcher. And all these people gathered around the stretcher. Uh, since I was hostess, I was to make sure that people had all these uh, things that they needed. And uh, the participants were around this, throwing salt, all kinds of other media. And then they had paints, water, all kinds of media, and then the instructor was guiding them. And on the right-hand side, I was demonstrating at the fair um, crocheting using different kind of media and uh, textures. And that was a lot of fun just to show people. And it was surprising. People didn't know what crochet was. <laughs> I think it, it for the younger generations, a lot of people aren't familiar with that yet, correct? I mean, that's probably what you see with all your volunteer work. And so I would like to ask you two questions. One, if people were interested, well, three, what's your favorite medium? What do you like to do the best? I like yarn because I like the feel of it. Uh, the click clack of the needles kind of is comforting to me. Mm -hmm. It's easy to throw in a bag, take somewhere, and uh, so comforting. I've also enjoyed Lori teaching us about you can combine the beads with the with the wax thread and make beautiful crochet bracelets and necklaces and add those buttons and you know really have a mixed media and um, it's just I think that's my most favorite because of the the way you can transport it it's so comforting to me and it just takes away the gloom and doom sometimes that comes about with having uh, doctor appointments and having to go places and head off to like a lot of times I have to head up to Seattle and that's quite a trek. And so, yes, that would be my favorite. Okay. And um, you do a lot of volunteer work and if people were interested in doing that themselves, I'm, I'm assuming you get a lot of, of reward out of doing it yourself, right? Yeah. So if other people were interested in doing that, how would you recommend that they do it? Of course, I would recommend going to RSN. That would be an easy way to do it. Okay. Uh, okay. But of course, there are many, many ways to do it. Um, checking out your church group, um, checking out just simply online. There are many things right in your own community that uh, maybe if you just Google things in your community, things at the library, um, all kinds of things around you, maybe you just really weren't aware of. And um, I was quite surprised after I retired, there's things 
right here in my own community I was not aware of that I was just not taking advantage of while I was working that I could have been taking advantage of. Okay. So when you go to do these volunteer programs, I know that you teach a lot of youth, young adults, I'm assuming even, you know, older women, how to do new techniques, crochet, knitting, sewing, uh, the screen art, all of that. Um, if, if somebody wanted to learn how to do art and they didn't have any experience it, in it whatsoever do you have a like a tutorial do you not that you provide but do you go online and look for things do you watch tv shows or how do you get inspired and you know that's a good question i'm currently kind of in training with my group and that was one of our training questions and so um our group decided that YouTube is probably one of our best resources. Okay. However, there are a lot of online courses, but don't get tripped up and start getting uh, into something that you're going to have to pay for because there's lots of free things right on YouTube. And we also noted, again, there's lots of, community things. The library has some wonderful resources in our area. I don't know about your areas where you can sign up for some wonderful free classes for drawing. And um, also we have some, currently they brought in some sewing machines into our library and they're trying to expand our library for new creative outlets which that's that's incredible thank you marge please don't leave we're going to have q a at the end and i've already seen people ask questions so uh thank you so much and my next guest is going to be julie and julie if uh if you can so indulge me uh would you please uh, Suzette, could you bring up Julie's first slide? Because I want Julie to explain about her experience with kidney disease and how she became interested in art in the first place. Okay. Well, my hit, my uh, family has been really impacted by polycystic kidney disease. Um, I've lost several members of my family to polycystic kidney disease. My mom my aunt, um, my oldest brother, my middle brother, and I've also lost my son to PKD. Uh, he was 34 when he passed away. Um, my, I received a kidney transplant, it'll be 24 years ago in um, December. And my youngest son, who is now 38, he received a kidney transplant, um, a living donor, um, preemptive living donor um, transplant from his friend eight years ago in December. So that's incredible. Congratulations to both of you. That's incredible. And I'm sorry that you have lost so many family members due to this condition. So the picture that she's showing is my son, Jason. He is, was a free spirit. Um, he was involved in hockey. He loved art. He, could sit down and just pick up a pencil and draw without ever erasing whatever was in his mind came out. And uh, his friends told me a lot of his pictures were never done. He would paint over them. Um, he also was in music group. He scratched records and he was also Jay Spun. He did uh, weddings and birthday parties. Um, he worked at Camp Bloomfield out in California. It's a camp for handicapped and blind children. And that's a picture of him, the third picture over. Um, and uh, he worked in there, taught the kids art. And the top picture that says Emerge, that was the picture that he finished the night before he passed away. Oh. And um, I have that hanging in my house. I also have the bottom picture of uh, the Cleveland um, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame with uh, 
Statue of Liberty. Uh, you can tell he's been gone for a while because Statue of Liberty has a Walkman she's listening to, sitting <laughs> on a park bench. <laughs> and um, the picture with the woman holding the earth, that is a picture that I, he was on home hemodialysis and I would go help him spin his blood. And um, I had seen that sitting in his apartment and I asked him if I could have it. So he let me have it. So that is also hanging in our house. So, and so how did you get started with art? I've always been interested in art as a kid. I like to make things, do things, but um, it was never something that I pursued. Um, I always tried to inspire my kids to use their creativity. We would make things and, you know, we'd use things around the house to do th to make things. I would make birthday cards. I made games for my kids to play like, um, and my grandchildren, I pin the hair on, uh, uh, I can't think of her name, a Rapunzel for when that movie was big and just all different things that I would do make okay. up things that we didn't have to go out and, and buy. Okay. Well, uh, let's go ahead and look at your images. And I know you go to the get creative class as well, frequently. And I love seeing your art and Marge's as well. And uh, please tell us about your pieces. Okay. Um, so um, the get creative has given me a focus to get something done each month. Uh, sometimes I tend to uh, not do the art. So that's been a great help to me to just get inspired to do something. But the picture of the ghost, I made those for my granddaughters. Um, the first one is for Boo, uh, Bella Boo. I call her Bella Boo. So I put uh, Boo Bella. And then Olivia um, is her little sister who's um, seven. So I made that just to hang on their door for Halloween. And the picture um, to the right is called Generations. Um, it has pictures of my grandmother, my mother, uh, as the buttons, my grandmother, my mother, myself, my daughter, and my first granddaughter. And my mother would tell me stories of combing her grandmother's hair, her long red hair, and braiding it. So that's kind of just to bring all the generations together. They like yeah. to sew and cook. So I put different items of them, but they like to do gardening, flowers, needles, spools of thread. I love it. I absolutely love it. And the Halloween is just, this came at the exact time that it needed to with with halloween coming up next week i'm sure there are people who are watching this today that are thinking i need to do that for my daughter yeah. my son next slide please so um the one with the bird that's just one that i did and i joined after jason passed away um i joined an art group um online that's called lifebook and they give us different ideas to do and they do meditation, different things like that. And um, this is just one that I did. And then I found a quote that I liked. And I can't read from here, but <laughs> it says. Um, ah, on I the bird? Read. Yeah, on the bird. I can't okay. read it. It this. says, only from the heart can you touch the. Oh, darn. Hey, yeah. Hold on just a second. It popped up. Can you touch the sky? Yeah. So that's just, I always look for quotes that I think that go with the work that I did. Mm -hmm. And the other one was one of the first mixed media uh, pictures that I did. I just, just was a favorite of mine. And also my daughter and granddaughter picked the pictures to be shown on this. Beautiful. Just, I love all the colors. I just love it. And the hand. Oh, did you already do the hand? I did the hand. It just, it was just, uh, a class that was online that I did and just using different, different forms, different, there's collage underneath there, different paintings. Um, oh, that's fun. I know that we've done a collage product project and get creative. So that's, that's really cool. Okay. Next slide, please. And okay. these are just breathtaking. How beautiful the cute little button noses, please tell us about them. Okay. So the one, it was a, uh, 
called the happy traveler and what what symbols would you take what would you like to take on your trip and so the hummingbird was for resilience for courage the sea turtle was for patience wisdom longevity endurance the ability to enjoy life's journey and then the the frog was for um for having my transplant for transformation and for uh rebirth those are all yeah. symbols i looked up symbols that were important to me and looked up different anim animals or birds and those were the ones i chose to go on my journey through life it's just beautiful really beautiful and the angel since i have never seen a picture of my um donor that's that's my donor oh her that's name, so sweet that's, that's so sweet it's it's her name was robin she was mm -hmm. 19 years old and she was killed uh, she had a brain injury in an atv accident and um so that's that's my picture of robin what a Again, wonderful there, of you that, yeah that's collage and then it just says uh peace hope love wow and the infinity necklace too how pretty my son signed all his pictures with an infinity symbol, so I started doing that as well. Beautiful. One of my favorite symbols. Next slide, please. Okay. Um, the mermaid is just because I love the ocean and I love going to the beach. So that's just a picture that I drew of a, of a mermaid. And um, just, it is what it is, just a mermaid in the beach with, and the other picture uh, in an art, in a art, online art class I took, it was you were to pick a goddess to make a picture of. Mm -hmm. And the goddess is Maya. She's a Greek goddess of um, spring, of birth, and um, a nurture. And I made that one for my daughter for Mother's Day. That's so pretty. So pretty. Next, please. I think that's. Oh, there again, this is from a, a free online class. Um, mm -hmm. We were to draw three, three girls on a beach in bathing suits, but um, I did mine. I made a story that they were all friends from high school from the 70s. And um, so they went out on the beach at night to have a walk and just the different personalities, the one that wanted to keep her hair dyed blonde and still looks slim and trim. And... <laughs> Just, I made up a little story as I painted because it's a watercolor and I have trouble and I was going to rip it up and throw it away, but I decided that I have to learn to just keep going. And so I were, the, were, I, the, were the other pictures that you did, were those acrylic? Were they watercolor? Um, or some were, well, the other ones were acrylic. There's okay. They're all acrylic. This is a, a watercolor that I did just recently. I made it um, about a week and a half ago. I love the deep colors. It's beautiful. Yeah. Next, but, um, please. That should be it. Is it? Uh, no, I think you have. Do you have one more? I think you have one more. Oh, a couple more. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the one is um, yeah. donate life, um, grow memories, and... I actually entered that a friend that I worked with in, uh, as a transplant navigator it challenged me to be enter an art contest for Donate Life America. Mm -hmm. It didn't win, but they put it on a they put it on. Oh, they chose like five or six to be on greeting cards. So okay. that one was chosen. Oh, and that's cool. to me, Yeah, to me, um, a garden represents. I'm going to read what I wrote before. A garden represents peace tranquility, joy, and love, and the seeds planted and nurtured with loving care bring hope and new life. Beautiful flowers grow and bloom from seedlings to fill the garden with color and sweet fragrance, delighting all the senses. Like this garden, organ donation offers the opportunity for a rebirth, hope for a bright future, and a chance to create new experience and memories filled with love, light, and laughter. Beautiful. And so I tried to get all the organs. And the other picture that was on there was um, my family, my family tree. Uh, Jason is my little angel up at the top. Oh, and then, yeah. Um, that was my uh, 
daughter and son-in-law, they were expecting a baby at the time. So she was sitting on a, a pink nest. And mm -hmm. then um, uh -huh. my granddaughter hanging off the tree, my son who, uh, Jason, who uh, Jacob, who got the transplant, he was a hockey announcer at Ohio University. And then mm -hmm. my husband sleeping with his remote and um, <laughs> so most of the work I do is re personal. Right, right. And obviously, I think it. you can just see your family uh, coming out. Next slide, please. And uh, while it's coming up, do you have a favorite medium? My favorite medium is mixed media using all the different, um, you know, you can use collage, you can use magazine pieces, you can use paint over it, gesso, mold, you know, modeling clay, uh, different things to, to create different textures. Okay. And these are just some a uh, couple that my granddaughter and daughter picked that were from an online art class that I took. And I try to come up with my own style to show, um, you know, to express myself and to, you know, they'll give us a class, but I try to make it mine. Mm -hmm. And I was going to ask you who was your inspiration. And I think it's very clear it's your family. That it's the people who are close to you that you love. My family. And like I said, Jason got me involved in art. He, when he passed away, I boxed up his supplies and um, I couldn't bear to part with them. And so I scrolled on the internet, like Marge was saying, and found different found a class to take and it helped me connect with him, um, helped me get through my grief. And all of us in our family have artwork of him from him. So we connect with him every day. That's a beautiful tribute. And Julie, I really love the tribute to your donor as well. I think it was just uh, breathtaking. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you so much. Okay, our next panelist is going to be Abigail Clary. And Abigail is a little unique to everybody else. I know that you are an educator. You're a teacher, right? That's uh, right. Can we go ahead and bring up Abigail's slides? Because I'm sure it's going to have something to do with my first question, <laughs> asking you about your history with kidney disease. Yes, I want you to tell that. But first... I already let the cat out of the bag, right? You're an educator. Please tell them about what you do. We'll go a couple of slides and then tell us about your history with kidney disease. Yes, as Cher said, I'm a teacher. I teach special education to sixth grade students here in Northern California. And what you're looking at right there is our classroom door from last winter. I love to inspire my kids with art and they get to vote on the theme and they obviously chose snow. So we made a snowman and each of my kids got to make a snowflake. They wanted to do green and blue. So we went with that and they did green and blue snowflakes and they each got to choose where to put their snowflake on the door. So they loved doing it. And it was a great project for them to learn how to work together as well as make something nice that could be shared with the rest of the school. Okay, uh, I think we have one more slide. Yes. Yep. That was the pumpkin door from last Halloween. You can see it was kind of a Charlie Brown great pumpkin theme. That's because I am from the home of Charlie Brown in Sonoma County, California. So we did a little bit of that to uh, pay tribute to Charles Schultz and also celebrate the fall season. Well, I know you've done a door for next week. What kind is it a similar kind of door? It's actually this year I chose to do a window because my new classroom, I had to change classrooms and that door actually opens into what kind of turns into a wind tunnel. So to keep the decoration safe, we decorated a window. Oh, great. Super. Well, hey, you know what? Sometimes you have to improvise. Abigail, please share with the group your history with kidney disease. Yeah, I've had kidney disease since I since birth. I was born prematurely, three months premature, and I was diagnosed at three weeks old with a severe heart defect. I was able to have a successful surgery to repair most of the defects in my heart, but it did lead to an acute kidney injury to my kidneys. 
And when I was in high school, it became clear that the kidney function started to decline and my kidneys were not going to be able to sustain me. At this time, I'm still on medications trying to keep them afloat, but um, I'm looking to receive a kidney transplant at some point in the future. Okay, very good. And you didn't let it hold you back. You graduated high school, you went to college, and uh, I know that you come to the Get Creative class as well. And at Get Creative, you have shared with us this unique art form that I just, I just had to have you on. I just had to. Please tell me what it's called. It's called Iris Paper Folding. It's a special type of uh, paper folds. You can kind of see it in the picture there, in which you cut a shape into cardstock and you layer many thin pieces of paper in a spiral around the pattern. And that ends up creating a really incredible um, kind of greeting card type art. And you can see it in that of the kidney that I made. Okay. And, and comes where do you nice. get your paper at? I, um, well, you can use the origami paper or any type of thin paper, but I actually happen to have a large collection of old ne National Geographic magazines that mm -hmm. my grandfather uh, had stored in the basement. And um, he said the grandkids can use these and the grandkids are still using them 30 years later to wow. use the pages to make these kinds of art styles. So the like the apple, how long does it take you to make something like that? Uh, each project from start to finish takes me, well, the folding part takes about an hour. So each one takes probably an hour or two total to create. Okay. And where did you hear about this from? Well, in the fall of 2019, my local library started offering different types of art classes. And one of them was the Iris Paper Folding class. So I attended it and I made my first piece and I was hooked because I was never kind of an artist when I was a kid. And having paper type art that came out looking so beautiful yet so simple, it really resonated with me. So I started practicing and... Now I've been able to improve my skills and I really enjoy it. Is this your favorite medium? It I is. I too. I know you bake <laughs> and I know that, you know, it has to be so rewarding working with your kids at school and everything. But I would think, I mean, this is so cool. It is just um, so pretty, so pretty. And there's one for fall. Yep. Wow. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Um, so if someone was interested in doing the iris paper folding, where would they go to learn more about it? Well, I think as other panelists have said, there's lots of uh, tutorials available on YouTube as well as uh, classes you can find, perhaps through your local library or other source. But uh, my advice would be to take uh, whatever class or tutorial you can and then practice as much as you can. Okay. All right. Super. Thank you, Abigail. Loved it, as always. Never, never fails to please. Okay. So our next artist is David Truillo. And David is going to... Uh, David's story is a little different from the other people on the panel. I Like Abigail, he grew up with kidney disease as well. But David's art is completely different from everybody else's. Uh, you're not just a tattoo artist. You also do, is it graphic art that you would call it? What what kind of arts do you do, David? Um, I would say it's more, um, um, more pencil, like color pencils, um, charcoal. I mean, watercolors, I do all kinds of stuff. I mean, you, you name it, I can do it. <laughs> Okay. Okay. And tell us briefly your your history with kidney disease. Um, I was, so I was born with uh, renal dysplasia. Um, so at a month old, um, they realized that my kidneys were not going to grow to size. So from a month to about three years old, I was on peritoneal. I was then offered a transplant uh, from my dad. And then that went on to having another transplant later on in life from my aunt my uncle, and then just 11 years ago, I received another transplant from the pair exchange where my little brother donated to a little 15-year-old girl and her dad's best friend donated to me. And so it's been quite a journey with four transplants, but I mean, I've always integrated art in there to um, kind of just, you know, 
take my mind off things and to to just you know try to create something beautiful i know you said growing up you've told me previously that growing up it was a coping mechanism for you oh yeah very much so it was um i mean being at such a young age in the hospital and you know at peritoneal and dialysis hemodialysis i just remember you know kind of being there watching movies you know one of my favorite movies was wizard of oz sitting on the big dialysis chair i would sit there and you know draw things around me um it was a way to you know make greeting cards for the other kids in the hospitals um i mean i just i really tried to just give back to what i saw around me you know and just everybody that helped out you know my nurses and everything you know hey do you have um can you draw me this for you know a greeting card can you draw me this for you know my wedding cards and i would just do that you know just try to try to incorporate what was going around me into you know an outlet okay all right so how did you become a tattoo artist you know it's a funny story i just um i ended up going to a shop with my buddy and he was getting tattooed at the time and i was sitting there doodling you know i usually carried a sketchbook with me all the time and one of the bosses there one of the one of the higher ups told me hey you know you got a lot of cool drawings are you interested in becoming a tattoo artist I was actually working construction at the time at a, at a place. So from, you know, construction at three o'clock in the morning till about noon. And then I would shoot over to the tattoo shop from noon to about nine o'clock at night. And it was all free work. I mean, I was working there free for about a year as an apprentice. And then somebody finally took me under their wing and showed me, hey, this is how you do it. You know, but it's it's very different from, you know, a, a color pencil in your hand to a live needle on somebody's skin. <laughs> But it's uh, <laughs> it's fun. It's it's definitely a fun experience. <laughs> I've I've had a tattoo, and I imagine if they're all like me, they're moving targets. So, <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go through your work. Can you tell us about uh, the first image that's up there? Yeah, so something like that. I drew it um, basically, you know, from. It was a place where I, I felt kind of like, you know, it, it's nothing's going right. I'm always sick, this and that. But at the same time, I wanted to show that there was always growth around me. There's always some type of growth and you always have to see the light, uh, you know, through through everything. There's always, you know, negative around you or maybe you're feeling low, but you always can grow from it. And you could always show that that there is positivity around you. I know my, my kind of my art is a little bit darker, but yeah, I, I always do try to incorporate some type of you know, happiness and, and light in it, you know, you just kind of got to look through it. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, next image, please. That was actually a um, image for one of my buddies. He had a, uh, he was on a second heart transplant and wow. he wanted to get, he wanted to get um, a tattoo on his chest. So it was supposed to be all the way out on his chest. He actually chickened out, didn't end up getting it, but <laughs> That's what I created for him to get. It was the image of the heart with the wings around him for his donor. Wow. Yeah. Next image, please. That was cool. Yeah, so the image on the left is actually um, charcoal. It's charcoal drawing on a paper. Um, it's actually one of my shop friends that, that was there. I kind of just was watching him and I was drawing him. I was like thinking of him. Hey, you know, I wonder what he'd look like as a weird pirate or something. So, <laughs> I ended up drawing I was him. Say, you know, he kind of resembles a pirate. <laughs> <laughs> I ended up drawing him. Um, and then the image on the right was honestly, it was a contest that it was a local, you know, something around here in the community. And they were going to hang people's art art in their shop. And it was going to be a bid for um, kids with, uh, I believe, with either renal, renal um, transplants or something like that, where they would bid off your art. So that piece is actually gone. It went up for I think seventy five dollars, so it was you know pretty big size, but yeah, it, it, it's gone now. But I had fun drawing it. <laughs> wow, that you know, and it's appropriate for next week. Yeah, <laughs> next exactly. image. Yeah. yeah, we have Halloween coming. Now these are really cool looking. Uh, tell us about these. Yeah, so um, the image on the left is actually um, a moth. It's supposed to be a moth, like a rebirth from the death to life. Um, it's actually on one of my neighbors around here. And, um, I'm in from Upland. And so it's on it's on them. She loved it. She, she wears it every day proudly. And the image on the right is um, a color portrait of a wolf. 
Um, it's not a buddy of mine. He wanted to incorporate it, you know, for strength and everything. And then we did, we were end up doing the whole uh, chief Indian headpiece around it after that, but it came out really good. I mean, I was really happy with it, with the way it came out. So. I love the eyes. They're, they're glassy. I mean, they actually look real. Right, Next you. slide, please. So the uh, image on the left was actually a cover up. Um, a girl came to me and had, you know, a boyfriend's ex name or something, <laughs> and she wanted it gone, <laughs> which I highly don't recommend you get anybody's name on you. <laughs> um, <laughs> they, uh, I've seen that in, tape, in TV shows. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. So she wanted it gone. She wanted something pretty. So this is what I, I was able to incorporate for her. And the image on the right was actually from my studio that I used to have. And she just wanted something to show like a koi fish, which uh, in Japanese culture, if it's swimming up, it means encouragement that they're passing from one point of life to another, that they, they've either graduated. In this case, this girl graduated with her master's. And wow. uh, so she just wanted to incorporate something of a growth. So, Okay. I'm especially fond of koi. That is beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, so this image is actually on a buddy of mine as well. Um, it's from his favorite band, Circus Survive. It's actually his whole leg we did um, from ankle all the way to kneecap. And he just um, kind of gave me free range to do what I wanted um, to incorporate the albums of the different um, music that he liked onto his leg. And we kind of just went from there. And I mean... It, it it took hours and hours, but, you know, the results are what you see. I'd go ahead and advance to the next slide. But while she's doing that, I wanted to ask, so whenever a person comes in, like, how do you get inspired? I'm sure a lot of people come in and they have a picture of a, a heart, a dolphin. And, and once you talk about it, you realize mm, this might like a name, you might realize mm, you might not be happy with this. Uh, what gives yeah. you inspiration in, in your art and in a design whenever somebody walks in asking for that type of art? Um, I think, you know, you can, there's always room for growth. I mean, if somebody comes in with, you know, a single heart, I can say, you know, Hey, why don't I, you know, put some, you know, swirls around it. Why don't I incorporate this? Do you want it to look 3D? Do you want it to look, I mean, there's always, you know, some type of higher, you know, um, drawing or design that you can put around it to make it fit that person's personality, you know, in some way or another. So. Okay, so what's the image on the left? So the image on the left is, is a bear. Um, it's supposed to be a bear with a bear paw. Uh, oh. It's actually on my, on my uncle. And uh, he's like, I think he's Native American. He wanted to get something with courage and strength. So I ended up doing that on him. The image on the right is uh, a tribute to like uh, Hispanic culture for the uh, Dia de los Muertos. Yeah. Um, yeah. So somebody wanted to get that. It's, I don't even know if the, the person had, they just came in with a picture like that and said, hey, can you do this? Sure. Like, <laughs> wow. So yeah, it, it's, uh, took took some time, but. As you see, like, it, it's always fun to sit there because, you know, I can sit there and tattoo somebody for, you know, up to six, eight, 12 hours. And through that time, we end up getting to know each other, you know, and mm -hmm. friends. And I can share my experience, you know, with kidney disease to others to help them advocate for other people and give them hope. That's that's fantastic. Um, uh, whenever whenever you calculate what you charge for a procedure like that, is it based on the amount of time it takes you? Yes, it, it usually is um, by piece. I don't like doing by hours because, I mean, some tattoo artists I've seen, you know, they say I'll charge 150 an hour. But, you know, during that whole four hours, they're up going to the restroom, smoking, doing this. So you're not really getting your bang for your buck. So. <laughs> right, right. Well, do you like charge more that. for crybabies like me? <laughs> not at all not at all. not at all i didn't think so you are a sweetheart thank you david uh and thank you for sharing your art beautiful definitely breathtaking okay my next but not least panelist is ria khan and ria could you please share your experience with kidney disease with the group 
Yes, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, I was diagnosed with uh, kidney disease, well, kidney failures when I was nine. And um, so, and then I was on dialysis for three and a half years. So in total, it was uh, four and a half years of um, living with it before I got a transplant in uh, March, 2001. And it's now been uh, 22 and a half years. And it's, you know, we're, we're trying to do the best that we can, but you know, it's getting there where um, my nephrologist is saying that I'm definitely going to need another transplant sometime in the future. I, I understand. I'm just almost at 25 years and you just want to hold on to every point you can. So mm -hmm. I, I totally understand. How did you get involved in cooking? Um, it was it was just something that just came to me. <laughs> I don't know. One day when I was 12, I just wanted to make something um, after after school. My mom was still at work for her to come home and be able to you know, have a meal meal ready so that she didn't have to do it. Mm -hmm. And uh, my grandmother was um, a great chef. Uh, she cooked for a lot of people all the time. Um, mm -hmm. Her food was really delicious and tasty and beautiful. Um, so I think part of it may be genetic. My mom doesn't like cooking. Um, it, it's just, it just comes naturally to me. I'm, I'm not sure. It just happened one day. <laughs> Okay. Well, let me tell you, uh, everybody just hang tight because if you weren't hungry before, you are going to be by the time we finish with Rhea. Okay. So what are we looking at here? And I'm already drooling. Uh, this is a Dutch baby pancake. Dutch baby pancake. It's a, a German pancake. Um, you, you basically just blend all the ingredients and then you pour it into a hot Dutch oven and pop it in the oven uh, at high temp for, I think, about 30 minutes. And then it comes out. It's like really fluffy. Mm -hmm. um, it's actually bigger than that. And like wow. you see in the picture when, when it comes out and it's very hard to take a picture right away because <laughs> it just kind of flops down. But mm -hmm. that's what that is with the homemade lemon curd and blueberries. Where do you get your inspiration for this? Do you go to social media, video? You know, some people have talked about YouTube. I mean, did you go to somebody else's house and they had this? How did you discover it? Um, it was probably Instagram. Um, that's where I get a lot of my inspiration. Sometimes, you know, a lot of the times I, it, I'm i just sitting at home and I'm like, hey, you know what? I want to cook, cook food from this cuisine. And it's just very random. But um, then I'll go on Instagram and I'll see other people's creations and want to make those. And um, I'll go on YouTube. It's, you know, Google it. It's kind of endless. Well, you know, the possibilities are endless what you can find. Oh, yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Next. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay. So what is this on the left? On the left, that is uh, something called chilber. Um, that's a Turkish name for this dish. It's also in, in English, they just call it Turkish eggs. So you have um, some Greek yogurt or, you know, if you happen to have Turkish yogurt, but I use Greek yogurt and uh, you mix it with some grated um, garlic, a little bit of salt. Um, I like to put some lemon juice on it, which is not traditional. And then uh, some poached eggs on top and a, a chili butter made with Aleppo pepper. Wow. And the one on the right? Um, that's your good old oatmeal. <laughs> it's, it's a peanut you butter. oatmeal look butter. good. <laughs> <laughs> My oatmeal does not look like that, Rhea. <laughs> you know, wow. honestly, I also do it for myself because uh, ever since I was, you know, a teenager, I've wanted my food to look good. If I want, you know, I have... I just have to look at my my plate or my bowl and it has to be appetizing to me. <laughs> well, it has to help your appetite, right? Yeah. If it looks better, you're going to want to eat it. Now, if you need to lose weight, maybe not that big of a factor. But this has peanut butter, chia seeds, banana, strawberries, blueberry. Mm -hmm. Wow. And then you have oatmeal. I okay. think I cooked it in uh, oat milk. Wow. Wow. Oh. Okay, next slide, please. And <laughs> I'm going to have a hard time picking out what I'm going to eat for dinner. Do you have a favorite kind of food that you like to cook? 
You know, uh, I go through phases. Um, so right now it's Korean food. Um, I don't cook a lot of it, but I, I love it. I'll make like homemade kimchi. Mm -hmm. And, you know, one thing or another, I love Korean food at the moment. <laughs> If I come see you, will you cook for me? <laughs> of course. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. Uh, what kind of, I see we're looking at a kebab. What kind of kebab is this? Um, that's actually uh, chicken satay, which is, oh. um, you know, a, a, a Thai dish. It's like a grilled yeah. chicken with a peanut sauce. And then I have like a spicy Thai inspired slaw and mm -hmm. some cucumbers and um, jasmine rice. Okay. And on the right? On the right, uh, I want to say that was like a sourdough toast. And that's like a, like a barbecue Um, beans that I got from Trader Joe's. It was like a cowboy barbecue beans. And then I added a little more barbecue sauce to it and topped it with um, so su some sumac onions that I made at home um, mm -hmm. and tomatoes, parsley and kewpie mayo, which is a Japanese mayo. You know, Gigi made a comment and she was reading my mind. She's saying that this looks so aesthetically delicious. <laughs> and so In our preparation for today's course, you know, I had mentioned photography, that you're really good at photography. You've got a good eye about the angle, the colors, placing the food out. So do you take a zillion pictures and pick out the good one or, or have you through time, have you gotten better at taking the pictures with photography? Have you learned over the, over the time? Yeah, you know, if you look at some of my older posts, uh, the photos were not as good, even though the food and the plating was good. Um, and but also um, what happened is that phone cameras got better. I don't use like oh. a professional camera uh, to take the pictures. And I try to use like natural outdoor lighting. Uh, sometimes okay. that's difficult, you know, at nighttime. So I have a ring light, which helps, but it's not as good as like natural outdoor lighting. Um, right. So I love that if you see the picture, if you've seen the pictures, you can see the difference um, between the one on the left versus the one on the right, which is in the, you know, daytime um, right. outside. Um, so and yeah, I actually used to take a lot more pictures and then pick out the ones that I liked. Uh, but now, I, you know, sometimes I take one picture and it's great. Sometimes it's like two or three. Mm -hmm. Okay. Next image, please. Okay. So on the left there, I'm not sure if you're any of you are familiar with the Hulu series, The Bear. Oh, I am. <laughs> yeah. It's all so, about cooking. Yes. Yeah. On the left is the, the omelet from The Bear. It's a French omelet um, stuffed with boursin cheese um, topped with some ruffled potato chips and uh, chives. Wow. Wow. Okay. <laughs> and on the right? On the right, another bowl of Turkish eggs because that's my favorite brunch item. <laughs> ah. So you do have a favorite food. <laughs> yeah. That's beautiful. Okay. Oh, now carbs, you have me. You have me <laughs> hands down. Okay. So um, what is on the left? Um, this is like a sun-dried tomato pasta. So it has, um, you know, fresh tomatoes as well, but it's uh, sun-dried tomatoes. It's not, it's very, very simple. It's just pasta, pasta water, a little bit of Parmesan, sun-dried tomato, and and you have yourself a great meal. <laughs> pasta water does make a difference, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. I've, I've, I've yeah. used it myself. Okay, and on the right? On the right, that is a tomato toast. That is something I'm obsessed with at the moment. Okay. It's a toasted I sourdough. Yeah, a toasted sourdough with um, QP Japanese mayo. Um, something called, uh, if you see the green flakes, that's uh, called furikake. It's a Japanese rice seasoning with like seaweed and other mixtures oh. and uh, sliced heirloom tomatoes and pepper. Okay, next slide, please. <laughs> okay all right so uh i see the beautiful flowers in the back and three <laughs> wonderful appetizing dishes 
Yeah, um, yeah, and you can see my dog Zuri. She's she's a foodie as well. <laughs> she's <laughs> as are mine. As are right mine. <laughs> uh, what yeah. dishes do, have you prepared there? Um, this is an Iranian meal. It's um, or like Persian. It's called chicken fasanjan, mm -hmm. uh, which is like a stewed chicken uh, cooked in pomegranate molasses and walnuts, um, and then. I think it's just, yeah, it's like a saffron lima bean uh, tajik wow. rice. Uh, I love tajik, that one. Yeah, tajik is like crispy rice, basically. Um, and then a, like a salad, and then you have a, a cucumber yogurt. Wow. And tell us the names of your dogs. I see that they are in matching outfits with you. Yeah, with me. We're we're in the same <laughs> same matching. <dress. laughs> uh, the one um, to your le left of the screen that's looking off to the side, that's Zuri. She's on my lap right now. She loves, um, you know, sitting on my lap during any kind of meeting. Um, and then the one smiling with her tongue out, that's Cinnamon. Oh, they are absolutely precious. So <laughs> precious. And so you are on social media. Like you said, you're on Instagram. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, one thing that I did want to bring up about Rhea that is, I, I know David's been on, he's been in the RSN uh storyline right we've shared david's story before in the past lori shared a link to david's story uh ria everybody is going to be on the cover of the next kidney talk magazine and it's my understanding that's going to be mailed out uh probably in the next week maybe two so start looking in for it in your a uh, mailbox and Suzette, could you share a picture of what the cover looks like? And yet another dish. <laughs> so is this a flatbread? Uh, it was an attempted focaccia. It didn't turn out to be a focaccia, but it was okay. decent. <laughs> okay. It's definitely pretty. It's very I, pretty. I have made focaccia and it did not look as pretty as yours. <laughs> <laughs> it is gorgeous. Thank uh, you. Do we have questions for the panelists? Isela, can you help me? Um, I know we've got lots of chats going on, but if we have specific questions, can you help me funnel those out, please? Yes, I'm looking now. There are plenty of comments. Everyone loved your panel. So thank you all for sharing your stories Great job, and, and your art. I mean, so, so wonderful. Let's see. Uh, okay, Willie asked a little bit ago, what is the name of the art group that Julie belongs to? The art group, it's called Lifebook. And okay. um, it, <clears throat> she offers free classes like twice a year. Um, right now, there's a Lifebook starting in 2024. And um, you have to pay for it. You know, it's like $120, but it's $120, $130, but it's a year-long course, and you get various uh, teachers that teach the class, all different kinds of mediums. And it's on, you can find it on Facebook or Instagram. Great. Thank you, Julie. Oh, I yeah, I haven't taken it for a couple of years, but I'm thinking of joining it again. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. And uh, Char wants to know, da uh, David, where can we find you? Uh, I think she wants to know if, if you're freelance as well. Uh, I am freelance, but unfortunately, I don't have an Instagram at the moment. It got hacked, so I'm not able to access it. But I mean, if you're free free for it, I can leave you in my email or anything to, to get a hold of me. Or you can reach out to um, Estelle or anybody to get a hold of me. We can always forward an email to David. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, awesome. And then we have one more question from the Q&A. Who gets to eat Rhea's yummy food when she's done? <laughs> <laughs> Me. <laughs> yeah, uh, mostly me. Um, uh, my best friend, who is also my roommate, um, she gets to eat with me often. You know, we'll have dinner together. Um, she also helps out if my if my parents are around, especially my mom, uh, she'll eat it and my boyfriend. Okay, very good. 
Well, uh, if we don't have any more questions or comments, uh, I would like to thank the panelists. You were all so helpful, so open with your art. I know sometimes whenever we are sharing our art, it's something personal to us, you know, and it's it's enriching for ourselves but i want to thank you all for sharing it with everyone today it was you all brought something forward that was different and unique and i just from the bottom of my heart thank you so much for sharing today you know this is to inspire the people who are attending today to try something new or maybe to pick up something that they were doing before and they kind of forgot i saw someone had mentioned about diamond art and you know during get creative we do like acrylic flow and you know there's so many mediums out there that you could try you could virtually come up with your own kind of art and uh get some kind of of uh, positive feedback from it so uh, again thank you everyone today thank you panelists and thank you for the participants for hanging around on a saturday afternoon and a shout out to our corporate mission partners for making this happen.